Good morning. Good morning. Now, good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's good to see you today. I would that you turn in your Bibles to Psalms 100. We're going to read responsively Psalms 100. Got it? Say amen. amen. All right, I'll begin reading. Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all your lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. No know ye that. The Lord is God. Is he that made us? And not we ourselves. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gorge with thanksgiving. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, sorry, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. The Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. May we pray. Father, we thank you so much for this day. We pray that you would bless the services that will follow. Bless the senior citizens today as they represent your goodness. In Jesus' name we pray and say thank you for hearing us. Amen. Amen. Are you ready to sing? Amen. All right, turn to page 341. 341, to God be the glory.
Jesus the Son and give Him the glory great things He has done Thank you. You may be seated. Good morning, family of God. We're going to have our welcome this morning by Sister Brenda Clay Stoner and Sister Anise Mason, followed by remarks from our pastor, Kennedy C. Luckett. So all of you know what today is, correct? Yes. What day is it? Senior Citizens Day. And why do you have Senior Citizens Day? That's right, to honor the distinguished senior citizens. And even though we don't look like senior citizens, our joints may be aching, our shoulders may be aching, and we may be walking on a cane or crutches, but we're still senior citizens. So we'd like to welcome you to our Senior Citizen Day. We're not drabby, we're not sad, but we're happy. We're happy to be here, and we're happy that you are here. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Now, we want you to know, because you're such special people, we have prepared a dinner for our senior citizens, our new members, our visitors. And if you look in the bulletin, you will find this menu. Now, some of you may not be able to stand in the line. If you can't stand in the line, circle what you want, give it to our servers, and she will bring you your dinner. So please, after this service, come downstairs and have a wonderful time with Miss Mason, myself, and all the senior citizens. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Happy Sabbath. Amen. You good, glad to be in the Lord's house today? Amen. God's so good to us, isn't he? Looks, looks out for us. He watches over us. Even when, you know, sometimes it's not on our minds, we're on his mind. Isn't that, isn't that good to know? Amen. Amen. I didn't hear anybody say it, but it's Sabbath, everybody. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad about it. Amen. It is it is a blessing to see you today. Um, it is Seniors Day, and while, while senior age is a goal that I'm striving to attain, um, I'm, I'm not there yet. Amen. So I just, I'm just saying my little part. And, amen. Amen. Getting out, getting out of the way and letting uh, the folk who know what they're doing uh, have, um, have the day. We're happy to have... I guess speaker with us today as well. Uh, he, he's a blessed man of God, and I know you'll be blessed to hear from Dr. Thompson uh, in just a little while. We we had, uh, as you know, of course, funeral services on uh, Thursday for Sister Mama Sarah Smith. Um, thanks for all who came out so wonderfully, and for all of your um, support. Wanted you to be in prayer for uh, their daughter Debbie. Debbie is in uh, the hospital this morning. Uh, actually, she's at uh, Floyd. Am I telling, saying that right? Yeah, Floyd, Floyd Memorial uh, is where she is. Um, keep on your prayers. She was feeling a little poorly all this week, but she wanted to, you know, hang in there and get through the funeral and so forth. Uh, I think that she's getting good help now and uh, should be bouncing back, um, you know, soon. But we, we've learned never to take anything for granted. Isn't that right? Amen. Amen. So prayer is in order, and I know that you will. Uh, I know that you will follow through on that. Uh, good to see uh, uh, some of our new members in the house today. 
Amen. Amen. Uh, let me let me do let me do this right quick, and then I'll be out of the way. You know, it's it's um, it's always easy to talk to new members and that kind of thing about you know how to keep Sabbath and how that goes and so. But the best way for people to 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 learn that is experience it. Amen. Amen. You know, just think about it. Just think about it. When Sabbath is, when, when worship is done today and we're done with, with uh, dinner downstairs, there's still some hours to go before sunset. Um, and for, for, for those who are new to uh, Adventism and so forth, you know, the question always is, so what do I do with the rest of that day afternoon? How do I keep this, this Sabbath and so forth? How, how do I honor God with that? So, um, if if you're here today, you're and you're not a new member, but you're you know you're you're a seasoned Adventist. You've been a while, a while, and so forth, and you've got uh, the opportunity, or you're you're able to, if somebody would like to um, have a have some a new member hang out with you and your family for the rest of Sabbath, huh? Amen. Can, can you just wave your hand at me right now? You say, yeah, Pastor, I can do that. You're welcome. I see the, the Jenkins right here, Sister Hall. Anybody else? Anybody else? Yes, my wife said, so I'm waving my hand. Yes, you, you're you welcome to. Thank you, Sister Early, Sister Turner. Uh, so, so, new believers, look, um, just let me do this. Those that raised your hands, can somebody from that family, can you just stand right quick? Um, so people have a have a uh, a visual, amen. You see any of these nice looking people, new members? You see any of these nice looking people? When we get up in a few minutes to greet each other, um, and uh, just just slide up to them and say, "I saw you stand. I'd love to spend uh, some time Sabbath afternoon. Uh, that'd be good fellowship. They they got you covered. Is that all right?" Amen. Thank you. Thank you. And you can always just tap past on the shoulder um, and, and we'll we'll be happy to have you uh, as well. Thank you for that. The last thing I want to say to you is please um, also think about your children. Think about your children. There's a great Sabbath school uh, downstairs for uh, your young people. You don't have to wonder what can you do with them or where can they be. You know, Sabbath school is a great place for a child to learn how to about falling in love with Jesus. Amen. Uh, and you need all those opportunities uh, to give to your children that that you can can afford to do. So please, uh, uh, um, we start at nine thirty, and we just want to encourage you uh, as you're coming, bring your children as well um, because they need what Sabbath school can can offer. Have a blessed Sabbath. Amen. thank our pastor as well as Sister Stoner and Sister Mason but uh, our pastor is not quite a senior citizen yet so we just want him to know that it's not so bad uh, I don't have to get up and go to work every day I don't know about you who are not senior citizens and to those of you who have not made it to senior citizens yet I want to tell you to be true to your teeth because if you don't, they may be false to you later, okay? <laughs> Keep that in your mind as young people. It's not a bad idea, not a bad idea. At this time, uh, we're going to greet one another. So we're gonna ask you if you would stand. We wanna see somebody with a, and I see a smile already. I see Marvin Belcher over here smiling already. So if you can smile like Marvin Belcher, let's, let's go and meet and greet each other and tell each other happy Sabbath, all right?
just want to praise you forever and ever and ever. Blessings and glory and honor, they all belong to you. Thank you, Jesus. announcements so we would ask that you would please give your attention as these announcements are given so after service I would like to meet with all of you who have been in the adult choir or youth choir under the direction of Ralph Ford in previous past years I need to uh, meet with you briefly down front for about five ten minutes uh, this is in regards to a reunion concert for 2014 uh, during the Labor Day weekend. So please meet me right here in front of the podium, right here in these seats, right after Sabbath. Five, ten minutes, please. I will not hold you any longer than that. Thank you. And also, fruit. It's that time of year again. You can call me. I'm ready to take orders. Um, and I'll be making phone calls. So if you don't have my number, check with me. I'll give you my number. It should be in the bulletin. There's a, there's a list in the bulletin. So please give me a call and order your fruit for EL Minutes. Thank you. Good morning, church family. Good morning. We have a special occasion on tomorrow. We invite the church to come out. Everybody will have food fun fellowship is the annual calendar tea the hours are from well from five to seven but this after well after sabbath from sunset sabbath until 10 o'clock tonight if you the coronators would like to come and work on setting up the tables they can do that sunset to 10 o'clock tonight tomorrow from one to four if you still got Still got some things to do on tomorrow, one to four, to come set up your table. We'd like to invite you to come. It'll be a fabulous time, and you will enjoy it. Yes. I, I'd just like to add, you, your donations are so very important. So will you please find your coordinators of your particular month? I am the coordinator for the month of August, and, uh, and she's January. <laughs> so find your coordinator. It's so difficult to run around the church and get the donations, so find us. We will be up around the front uh, after church. So please do that, and we uh, thank you so much. The proceeds go to E.L. Minnis School, and we, it's like our baby, and we need to nurture it, and we need materials and supplies. The school cannot fend for itself. So please uh, cooperate with us, and thank you so much. Good morning, church family. 
Just want to let you know that there has been a nursing home outreach scheduled for next Sabbath, the 19th. We are going to Regis Wood Healthcare Center. Our own brother Paul Lynham is a patient there, and we are about our father's business. Amen. Um, it's not the address is is not in the bulletin, but it is 4604 Low Road. That's off of Tellersville Road. And I'm just asking that while you're out this week, if you'd be so kind, um, we're just going to take them just a small token. Um, I get cold, so I know they get cold too. So some socks or footies for men and women, if you could just pick up a few of those items. And in addition, we're asking that you pick up hats, scarves, and gloves, uh, winter uh, apparel, so that we can go out and give to some of our homeless people who are looking for jobs and just don't have those kind of things. And we can just be um, a help to somebody. So if you could do that for me this week and see me next week or at prayer meeting, I would greatly appreciate it. And if you'd like to come out and share with us, I sure hope you would, because I'm going to be calling on some of you for the program. And the address for the nursing home will be in the bulletin next week. Thank you. Good morning, Magazine Street. Um, the announcements for children's ministries are in your bulletin on the blue paper. Uh, I just wanted to make a clarification that became apparent. First, I want to say thank you to all of you who helped out during the evangelistic series downstairs with the children. We had a great time. Sometimes it was a wild time, but we really appreciate all of your support. Um, on our upcoming events, it says Huber's Farm next Sunday at 11 a.m. I just wanted to clarify, this is not a drop off your child kind of event. If you notice, it says we're planning a trip to the farm for your family, which includes you, the parent, and the driver. So um, we would like to meet at the church at 1045, so we'll be ready to drive over. If you have any other questions, feel free to see me. And we are still soliciting donations for snacks for Children's Church, and our next Children's Church is for November. Thank you. We want to thank all of those who gave announcements and ask you to please respond accordingly. I want to just take a moment and let you know that uh, one of our own, Brother Russell Branch, uh, has received his uh, MBA in Business Administration <laughs> from Sullivan University. One thing about the Adventist Church, we always encourage and promote education and we look forward and we appreciate people who better themselves by getting an education. But you know, we don't just stop at education uh, in a secular way. We look for education in a Christian way. So this morning, I want to call up front Sister Cheryl Hines Ross, who has recently completed the doctrinal Sabbath school class, where she's gone through 13 weeks and she recently graduated, and she was baptized. Well, congratulations, Cheryl. We're so glad. Thank you. Thank you. We had two others, but I don't believe they're present with us this morning. There was Sister Notoria Reed. Oh, please, Notoria, please come. Okay, we're so glad you're here. 13 weeks. Thank you. And we also have our brother Robert Debro. Is Robert Debro here this morning? Well, these people have been faithful, and now we've got a new class just beginning. We studied our first lesson today. So they've got 13 weeks of study, and hopefully you'll see them come and receive their, their certificates as well. Did you have other comments? Okay. Thank you, and enjoy the rest of our service today. Good morning, church. 
Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. It's time for our praise and worship service. We'll be doing a medley of two songs, and the title is, um, We Just Came to Praise the Lord and Bless His Holy Name. It will be featured on the monitors. Will everyone please stand?
Amen. Just before we pray this morning, uh, I think I saw Robert Debro. He's recently baptized and completed his studies, but he's found his place. He's working down in the kitchen preparing food for you. And I thought I saw him up a minute ago, but apparently he's gone back down. Uh, oh, oh, we have your certificate, Robert. Please come forward. It's wonderful to be baptized, but it's a great feeling to find your place in the church and serve God with your gifts, and that's what this young man is doing. God bless you. Well, it's prayer time, saints. This is a time that we can bring our cares to the Lord because he has all the answers. So I invite you at this time to make your way down to the altar. And those that can't, if you would neatly bow so we can pray. Father in heaven, we just humbly come before you, Lord, thanking you for allowing us to wake up this morning, Lord, and allowing us to come here to worship you, Father. Father, you're the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You are Prince of peace, Father. You are our way maker, Lord. Lord, we just thank you for all your many blessings. Lord, there's none like you. Father, we are sinners saved by your grace. And we ask you right now, Father, if you would forgive us of all of our sins and our shortcomings, Lord. Father, we are messed up, Lord. And we are only here because you gave your son to down Calvary for our sins, Lord. And Lord, we ask you to forgive us of our sins, Lord. Mold us and make us in what you would have us to be, Lord. Lord, prepare us for your soon coming. Father, I just thank you, Lord, for just sustaining us and keeping us throughout this week, Father. We all had all types of issues going on in our lives, but you kept us, Lord. We can't even keep ourselves. We're only here because of you, Lord. You've been faithful to us time and time after time, Lord. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord. New mercies we see every day, Lord. Lord, I just like to lift up all the sick and the shed ins, Lord Jesus. I lift up a uh, Sister Carolyn Nelson, Sister Mickens, Lord. Lift up uh, Sister Joanne Smith and uh, Suzette Bennett, Lord. Sister Cardine and Sister Garnett, Lord. There's so many. All those are a special uh, request, Lord Jesus. We lift them up to you, Father. Father, we are thankful and grateful that we have new members that have decided to go all the way with you, and they were baptized, Lord. But Satan has uh, uh, assigned assassins to them, Lord. And we ask, Father, that you would cover them with your blood. Strengthen them, Lord. Put a hedge of protection all around them, Lord Jesus. Father, I ask that you would comfort us. Uh, Brother Eddie and Don, and be with Debbie in the hospital, Lord. 
touch her, Lord. Give her the healing that she needs. Strengthen her, Lord. Give them peace, Lord Jesus. And Father, bless all those others that are grieving the, of lost loved ones, Lord. We all are, Father. But comfort us all and strengthen us, Lord Jesus. Father, I ask that you would be with the speaker of the hour, Heavenly Father. Give him strength as he is a vessel uh, preaching your word, Lord. And let us be recipients of the word that you have for us and that we would use it in our lives. Father, I lift up Pastor Luckett and Mrs. Luckett, Lord, and uh, Pastor Morrell and, and his wife. Lift up their families, Lord, and put a hedge of protection all around them. Give them wisdom on high to lead your people, Father. Father, I just thank you again for what you are doing in our lives, Father. And Father, help us to be obedient to you, Father. Lord, and, and prepare us for your soon coming, Father. Lord, remember those that are kneeling here before you and in the pews, Lord. I don't know what their needs are, but you are an all-wise God, and you know all uh, that we need, Lord. Bless us all according to our needs, Father. And Lord, again, I say thank you for what you've done in our lives and what you promised you would do. Father, we give you all the praise and all the glory in the precious and mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. church. It's thank you time for everything that God has been to us all. I just want to say I'm thankful for God for allowing me to be here today. It's been five years and I've been council free and I have so much to be thankful for. So if anybody else has anything to be thankful for, meet me down front.
Father God, as we come here today thanking you for your many, many blessings that you have done for us all. And I just thank you for allowing us all to be here today to celebrate the senior citizen one more time. And just thank you for those that was able to give and those that was able not to give. So bless them all and let us have a blessed day throughout the rest of this day. In the name of Jesus we pray, amen. amen.
Let's say another amen for the senior choir. Amen. They're very good. Will the deacons come forward to take the tithe and offerings? He said there was a couple who relocated to another city and they wanted to find a church that they could worship God in. And they found one in their vicinity, so that Sabbath they walked up the steps into the church and uh, <clears throat> they enjoyed the minister sermon, the music of the choirs and the fellowship of the believers. And at the conclusion they went home and they thought very good about the church. Some of the church members went to visit them that week and told them about the advantages of the church, the many activities. But they say before you can join the church, you must pay 10% of your income to the church. 10% before you could join. These people were on a very tight budget and they said, maybe we can't do this. Maybe this is the wrong church. And, uh, but they said, we would give it another try. But the minister came by on a pastoral visit and asked the new couple how they liked the church. And they said, we like it, but we have a question about paying 10% uh, of our income. We will be charged 10% of our income before we can become members of the church. And the pastor thought a little bit, and cleared his throat. And after thinking a while, he said, well, maybe you misunderstood what they said. We know we had to give all to God. And said, maybe that's what they meant. But really for the tithe and the offer, remember, everything belongs to God. And all God says is just to return 10%. Because you have everything that God gave you. And he said, so what we want you to do is come to church and you return just 10% of what you earn and you will receive blessings. The people thought about it and said, yes, we want to join that church because this would be an opportunity for us to share in God's blessing that he has given us. And then the minister said, now don't forget that if someone gave you $1,000 and said you just give $10, uh, $100 back, wouldn't you be happy? They said, oh yes, we'd be very happy just to return $100 out of 1000 And he said, that's all that God requires of you. And the people said, yes, we will join this church because God's blessing is here. All the tithe of the land, whether of the seeds of the land or of the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's. It is holy to the Lord. Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, in what way have you robbed me? In tithe and offerings. You are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me for this whole nation. Bring all the tithe into the storehouse, that there will be room, that there will be food in my house. And prove me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you the blessings, that there will not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the reviler for your sake, for so that it will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field. And all nations will call you blessed for you will be a delightful land, said the Lord of hosts. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to worship you in tithe and offering. We ask you to be with the funds that they will be used for the furtherance of your work. Bless those who gave and be with those who would but could not. We ask all you, these blessings in your name, honor, and glory. Amen.
Good morning, church family. It's good to see all of you out this morning. I have the privilege and the honor this morning of introducing the speaker for the hour. I can tell you that Dr. Thompson uh, is a native of Brooklyn, New York. I can tell you that he is uh, the fifth of 10 children. I can even tell you that he is currently married to the former Paula West of Sacramento, California. He has three grandchildren. He has three adult children and three grandchildren. I can tell you that he is well educated. He went to school at Atlantic Union College, Andrews University, Hartford Seminary, and he has pastored in Northeastern, Lake Region, Allegheny East, and South Central. And I can go on and on about uh, Dr. Thompson. But when the uh, Senior Citizens Committee uh, approached me and asked me to uh, find a speaker for today, the only name that came to mind was Dr. Thompson. I met him a number of years ago when we were both serving at uh, Madison Mission in Huntsville, Alabama, and I find him to be consistent in everything that he says and does. What he preached, he lived. I liked him, I like him, I should say, and I trust him. Uh, you know, there are very few ministers that I can say that about, and, and you know, I'm confident that when you listen to him, and when you meet him later after, after service, you'll know what I mean. He's a very down-to-earth and very welcoming man. As, as a matter of fact, um, he's been in ministry for, for over 30 years. He was my wife's pastor when, well, I'm not going to say how old she was, but, <laughs> uh, but he, he, he knows my wife and my wife's family. And, and my wife has even told me when, when, when we met up in Huntsville, you know, I know him. He was so nice. He was so, he, you can always go up to him and talk to him. You know, and that's what I like about, about Dr. Thompson. He's very approachable. So after, after the song of meditation, the next voice you will hear will be that of my friend, JT, Dr. Thompson. Oh, 
gladly follow thee. If our love were but more simple, we should take him at his word and our lives would be all sunshine in the sweetness of He is calling, come to me, Lord, I'll gladly follow. Thank you, Elder Ford. Giving praise and honor to God, who is the head of my life. Jesus Christ, the center of my joy. To the Holy Ghost, my companion, comforter and guide, to the senior pastor of this wonderful church, Dr. Kennedy C. Luckett, and his lovely wife, to my friend and colleague, your associate pastor, Michael Morell, and his wonderful bride, to all of the seniors, members, and friends of the magazine Seventh-day Adventist Church. It is a joy and a privilege for me to be here and to celebrate this Seniors Day with you. Yes, I'm a senior citizen. And I won't take it back. I came out and looked at the congregation and I was wondering, where am I the only one who's a senior here? We are the seniors. Just in case you don't know whether you're a senior or not. <laughs> One of the ways you can tell is when it looks like you dyed your hair a strange color. <laughs> but you know that you're there when your hair takes a vacation. <laughs> I've had the experience of leaving one room and going to another room in my house, only to get there 
and I, what in the world did I come in here for? <laughs> you start forgetting things. Now, I have to confess that I have a Gideon Bible with me this morning. This comes from the Marriott over here. <laughs> the last thing a preacher is supposed to forget <laughs> it happens. Now, I was a little disappointed that neither of the pastors were up on the platform with me. And I do recognize that this is for seniors only today. But I've known both of these gentlemen for a few moments, and they are not as young as they look, okay? <laughs> Good to see my colleagues in ministry and teaching, doctors Trevor and Edith Frazier here. Amen. Amen. Very good friend. I've known them for a long time. And then I have with me a student, a theology student from Oakwood University who is the chairman of a ministry initiated by the Ellen G. White estate called Project Reconnect. Would you welcome O'Shane Winter? Stand up. Amen. This is an outstanding young man. He's my understudy. So if I get stuck, don't be shocked if he jumps up here, okay? <laughs> I uh, am not going to preach a traditional senior Citizens Day message. You will forgive me. But I'm going to preach something that's on my heart that involve seniors and others. In this end time, I have discovered that God is developing a coalition. It is inclusive of seniors and youth who need to combine their talents and efforts in order to finish God's work. There are two texts that I want to direct your attention to. Revelation, the second chapter and the 10th verse, and then Revelation, the 17th chapter and the 14th verse. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 10. Hold your place there and then turn to Revelation 17, 14. And before we read the word, bless you. Would you rise in honor of Jesus Christ? Let's talk to the author of the word before we read the word. Our Father and our God, we have come to this house of worship and prayer, not for form or fashion, not to impress one another, 
but to lift up the name of Jesus. We pray that as we open your word, that your spirit, who inspired its writers, will inspire us as readers. Give us insight into your plan for our lives, how we can better serve you and do your will in order to hasten the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In his name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Revelation 2, 10 and 17, 14. Shall we read together? Do not fear any of those things which you are about to suffer. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison, that you may be tested, and you will have tribulation ten days. Be faithful unto death, and I will give you a crown of life. And then Revelation 17, 14. These will make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb will overcome them. For he is Lord of lords and king of kings. And those who are with him are called, chosen, and faithful. You may be seated as we consider together the topic, it ain't over yet. There are two institutions God ordained before sin, placed in Eden, the home of our first parents, which are under attack today. The Sabbath and the family. The Sabbath and marriage. Both are sacred. Not because people think so, but because God made them so. Both are so important to the spiritual, social, emotional stability and health of human beings that after Adam and Eve sinned, God allowed them to take these institutions with them out of Eden. They were not allowed to take any diamonds. They were not allowed to take any gold. They were not allowed to take any of the fruit from the tree of life, but God gave them permission. And yea, even instructed them to take Sabbath marriage and family with them. Because without them, we cannot have a covenant relationship with God. Could this be why Satan is working so vigorously to destroy true worship and the family? 
I want to suggest to you that Satan is about the business of attacking anything and all things that are sacred. He is attacking marriage and the family through media, through the people we call celebrities, through churches, through government, he is set on destroying the things that God holds sacred and the things that God has given to the human family for our survival. Somebody, somewhere, needs to stand up against the enemy. I hear it all over the place, and you see it too. People talking about marriage doesn't work. Married people argue all the time. Married people fight all the time. Married people cheat on each other. Married people are unhappy. Who needs marriage? You can hear and see the second argument. Marriage isn't necessary. Why can't people just live together? Date around. Play the field. Hang out. Why get married? It wouldn't be so bad if they were talking about being celibate and not married. But people want the privileges of marriage without being married. Argument number three, marriage is not permanent. Over half the couples who get married end up in divorce. Then the most recent to be added to the list. Marriage doesn't have to be as it is in the Bible. Any two people who are consenting adults ought to be able to marry each other as long as they love each other. By the way, this is one of the places where I have to part company with my president. I love him, respect him, honor him, but he's just wrong. These are the verdicts of the 21st century me generation. So why did God give us marriage in the first place? When God created Adam and Eve, he announced, I'm sorry, when he created Adam, he announced, it is not good for the man to be alone. Generic man. So that means man or woman. And then he said that he was going to fix this nature that he created Adam with by giving him a suitable companion. Then when God instituted marriage, he stepped back. Take a, took a look at what he had done, and then he declared that it is very good. That means that the creator said marriage, as he made it, was perfect. 
Edenic marriage then is critical to the family and the family is basic to society and to the church. Now let me ask you something. Do any of you in this century still watch TV? <laughs> You're sitting in front of your TV. The picture is clear. The colors are bright. There's no fuzz. The screen is not running. Perfect. How many of you would get out your toolkit and start fiddling with the TV? Or if your car is running perfectly, nothing is wrong with it. How many of you are going to lift up the hood and start tinkering with your perfectly smooth running car? If it is perfect and you start tampering with it, you are bound to mess it up. And that's what has happened with marriage, family, and Sabbath. Here's the problem. When people disconnect from God's plan, they make family dysfunctional. You see evidence everywhere. If I were to walk out of this building and at random pull aside ten children, seven out of ten of those children would be children raised in single parent homes. Now let me be clear. My mother and father were married until I was 12 and then separated and had a divorce. So I'm not talking against single mothers. Are you listening to me? My mother did the best she could with what she had. Amen, somebody. I'm not picking on mothers. But the truth of the matter is that children who are raised in single parent homes end up with ethnic disparities so that they do not do as well in school, so that they are more likely to live beneath the poverty line. They are more likely to have health issues. They are more likely to fall into crime and violence. They are more likely to experience premature death. But whenever you have 73% of a population moving in one direction, people think it's normal. They become accustomed to it. We are only 13% of the nation's population. But over 40% of the prison population. Single parent homes may be normative, but it ain't normal. One of Satan's most effective weapons to deceive people in 2013 is the postmodern mode of thinking. For instance, how many of you remember the name Chris Brown? How about Rihanna? Now that's an example of postmodern 
thinking all about me, not about you. Are you following? After beating her black and blue, using her head for a punching bag, after literally booting her out of the car, sending her to the hospital, Rihanna, sometime later, got hooked up with Chris Brown once again. And out of concern for her safety, in a media interview, they asked her, aren't you concerned about it? Her answer was, this is postmodern thinking, don't judge. I have to live my own truth. The postmodern mind doesn't believe that there are any absolutes. Everybody has their own truth, their own reality. They don't believe that there are any objective standards for right or wrong. Everything's relative. I'm an individual. I have to let my feelings and my experience guide me. They believe that you ought to relax because life is about having fun. This is exactly the opposite of the message of God's word. Jesus said, who said? Jesus, Jesus said, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Truth is not up for grabs. You can't decide what's truth and what's not truth. Jesus said, I am the truth. I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. And no one has access to to the Father, but by me. I read over in Isaiah the 48th chapter and the 17th verse that God has to teach us the truth. God has to lead us into truth. Look at what it says, Isaiah 48 and verse 17, thus saith the Lord, thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord thy God, which teacheth thee to do what? To profit. If you want to advance and move upward at the same time, you have to follow God's plan. Then he says, which leadeth thee by the way that thou shouldest go. Postmodern philosophy as I see it is straight out of hell. Don't let the devil lead you away from the truth. Base your understanding of the truth on what God says and what God says alone. The devil is at war with everything holy. And that's why Ellen White says in my life today, the essence of what she says is that as the family goes, so goes the church the society, and the nation. Now, I'm so glad that in all the changes that are taking place in the 21st century, that God is not asleep at the wheel. I'm glad that there are no emergencies with God. 
God's not off in a corner someplace scratching his head, wringing his hands, trying to figure out what to do. General Colin Powell said that before a general enters a war, he must have an exit strategy. God has an exit strategy. In the warfare between good and evil, God has an exit strategy. God has a way out of this mess. We know that he does because God knows the end from the very beginning. That's what he tells us in Isaiah 46, 10. Isaiah, the 46th chapter and the 10th verse says, Remember the former things of old, for I am God and there is none else. For I am God and there is none like me. What do you mean, Lord? Declaring. The end from the beginning and from ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand and my will, I will do all my pleasure. Satan is the architect of divide and conquer. So he wants to divide husbands from wives, parents from children, sibling from sibling, youth from seniors, and he wants to divide all of us from Christ. But division is the work of the enemy. So to the seniors I would say, don't let anyone tell you you're a has-been. Don't let anyone tell you you're over the hill. You're old school. You don't count. You have nothing to say. You have nothing to contribute. You have nothing to bring to the table. You have nothing to add to the conversation. That is humanistic speech and it is postmodern talk, but it's not the word of God. God told Moses in Leviticus 19.32, Thou shalt rise up before the hoary head and honor the face of the old man and fear thy God. He says, I am the Lord. If you look over in Proverbs, the 16th chapter and the 31st verse, you'll discover that it ain't over yet. The world may reject some seniors, but it ain't over yet. Proverbs 16, 31 says, the hoary head is a crown of glory. Now look at this. If it be found in the way of righteousness, so as long as you continue to follow the Lord, God says it ain't over for you. I don't know if anyone's paying attention or not, but the enemy is stealthily and systematically removing the foundations of our faith. I hear students raised in Seventh-day Adventist homes, asking the question, what difference does the Sabbath make? What difference does it make if you go to church 
on this day or that day. One asked me the question and wanted to argue with me, said, uh, how can you tell that the seventh day is Saturday? Raised in an Adventist home. I can tell because man may have named the days, but God numbered the days. You can change a name from one name to another, but the last time I checked, one is always one, and seven is always seven. It was that way in creation. It was that way at Sinai. And if God were going to change it, when he sent Jesus, Jesus would have told us. They're asking the question, who needs marriage? It's a foundation. Family is whatever you make it. It's a, it's a foundation. They're also trying to throw the spirit of prophecy under the bus. Ellen White's writings are outdated. They are irrelevant. They have nothing to say to us today. I want you to know it ain't over yet. I hear the voice of Isaiah the prophet saying in Isaiah 59, 19, so shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory unto the rising of the sun. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. We're experiencing that kind of flood now. But God says that the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard, a battle cry against him. He's going to use people to do it. And I want to be one of them. What about you? Israel, Psalmist, David raised the question for us in Psalm 11.3. In Psalm 11.3, David asked the question, if the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? If they're destroying Sabbath, family, marriage, the gift of prophecy, what can the righteous do? Well, if you are willing to follow the Lord, God will use you to be a part of that standard that the Spirit of the Lord lifts up. How do you know, Brother Preacher? I looked in Psalm 145 and verse 4. Psalm 145 and verse 4 says, One generation shall praise thy works to another generation and shall declare my mighty acts. The reason God put us in families as human beings is so that the older generation can give the younger generation the benefit of their wisdom. There are some animals who can fend for themselves in a matter of hours after they are born. But human beings aren't like that. Someone has to carry us when we are born. Someone has to feed us when we are born. Someone has to clothe us when we are born. Someone has to teach us how to walk and how to take care of ourselves. You need a family. Amen. 
I'm so glad God always has a witness. God always has a solution. And it's not one of division, but it's one of unity. Now I want to lay a few texts on you before I sit down. My wife said, don't say that. Because people are expecting you to sit down after you say that. I want you to look very closely at a couple of significant texts that speak to this generation, to you and I, and to us as a people. First one is in Malachi 4, verses 5 and 6. Malachi, the fourth chapter, fifth and six verses. God told Malachi, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before what? Before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And what is this Elijah the prophet going to do? Verse 6, and he shall what? That's more current than your newspaper. Long before we got to this generation, you look familiar. Long before we got to this generation, God said, because he knows the end from the beginning, I will send Elijah the prophet and he will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and the hearts of the children to their fathers. Lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Now, the disciples of Jesus applied this prophecy to John the Baptist. And they said that he was the voice of one crying in the wilderness. And they were right. Because that was a great day of the Lord. But it was not the dreadful day of the Lord. Malachi said that Elijah will come before the great and dreadful day of the Lord. So his prophecy has a twofold application. It was fulfilled with John the Baptist, preparing the way for Jesus. But that was not the dreadful day of the Lord. And so the pioneers of our faith looked at that text. Well, I should have read the other one. Look at Luke, the first chapter in the 17th verse. Told you I'm forgetful. Luke 1, 17, And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias, to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. That's how they applied Malachi to Jesus and to John the Baptist. But the dreadful day of the Lord comes just before Christ's second appearing. And so, beloved, we can look at that promise of Malachi and Luke and understand that there is a work for us to do. 
The work of God ain't over yet. It's not finished yet. Because there are people who have not had their hearts turned toward their children. In the end time, God is going to raise up men and women in the spirit and power of Elijah on a worldwide basis. What will they do? They will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just. What's the problem in the single parent home? In most cases, it's not the mother who is gone. It's the father who is gone. This will turn the hearts of the fathers back to their responsibility to their children. In our day and age, people don't feel that they are obligated to keep God's commandments and that somehow grace is going to cover them and their desire to keep on sinning against God. But when the spirit and power of Elijah falls on God's coalition, they will turn the disobedient to the wisdom of the just. It makes good sense to follow God's commandments. That's the only way we can have peace here on earth in our society. Makes sense to keep your family together. That's the only way we can preserve the virtue and the blessings that God has given to us. Joel said in Joel 2.28, that your old men, your what? Old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. In other words, he has a role for both the old and the young, working together, side by side, hand in hand, in one accord in order to advance his cause. What is that work? Isaiah says it for us very clearly in Isaiah 58 and verse 12. Isaiah 58, 12 says, And they that shall be of thee shall build, they shall do what? Build. build the old waste places. What Satan has torn down, they're going to build up. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations, and thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of paths to dwell in. And guess what they're going to use to do it? What the Seventh-day Adventist Church has identified as a summation of what God is saying in Revelation. And I saw another angel flying in the midst of the heavens, having the everlasting gospel the eternal good news to carry to every nation, every kindred, every tongue, and every people saying with a loud voice, fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come and But before you can proclaim it, you have to know it. You have to believe it. 
And then you have to throw your arms around it, embrace it. God isn't saying he wants us to be afraid of him, but to respect his sovereign right to rule in our lives. And after you proclaim it, you have to practice what you proclaim. You practice it by coming out of Babylon. The philosophy of the world, come out of it. The customs of the world, come out of it. The corruptions of our society come out of it. You come out of that and you come into his remnant. And then he wants us to prepare somebody to be ready to meet Jesus when he comes. Now look at this. Where the baby daddy is a deadbeat, somebody has to prepare the baby daddy's baby. Huh? Yeah. Forget about how it happened. Those are children made in the image of God who Jesus died to save. Somebody has to do something. Where the biological father is absent, someone has to step in and intervene so they don't go down the sewer. It ain't over till God's servants are sealed. It ain't over till the eternal good news is proclaimed. It ain't over till people everywhere have heard the three angels' messages. It ain't over until the remnant has embraced the commandments of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. It ain't over until we come to the unity of the faith, young and old, male and female, black and and white, brown, and yellow. It ain't over. To the love of Christ is seen in our character. To the church militant becomes the church triumphant. It ain't over until we repair the breach in Eden's Sabbath. Repair the breach in Eden's marriage. Repair the breach in Eden's family. Or as Psalm 103, 17 and 18 declare, it's not over until we enter a covenant relationship with God. Psalm 103, 17 and 18 says, but the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting upon them that what? Fear him. That's what it talks about in the three angels' messages. Unto them that fear him and his righteousness unto children's children, to such as keep his covenant and to those that remember his commandments to do them. I think it was Yogi Berra who coined the phrase, Nova, till the fat lady sings. But in looking it up, there's confusion about who started that saying. So forget the fat lady and forget Yogi Berra. But it ain't over until Jesus says it's over. We have the privilege of standing on Mount Zion with the Lamb. Although the beast and the kings of the earth and the 
false prophets will rally all against the Lamb. Revelation 17, 14 says, These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them. For he is Lord of lords and king of kings. And they that are with him are the called, the chosen, and the faithful. He calls us through those messages that those angels, that those people carry. And those who accept it, he chooses. And if we allow his spirit to have his way in our hearts, his spirit will keep us faithful. I'm a real senior citizen. I'm not going to go down that way. I'm going to go this way. I want to appeal to you to take your faith seriously. Jesus died to establish your faith. He gave up his life in order to give us life. Thank you. I'm on. Okay. He gave up his life in order to give us life. But if you go back to Eden, one of the ways that God made us in his image was to give us freedom of choice. He has always respected our freedom of choice. So as much as God wants us to be in heaven. He will not force us. He's not going to drag anybody to the kingdom. He's not going to have anybody who gets there and is upset because they don't want to do this, that, or the other that is a part of God's will. He wants us to be there, but he will not force us to be there. So the only way we can make it to the kingdom is we have to surrender. This is good posture in front of the Lord of Lords and King of Kings. It's the universal language for I surrender. I'm going to stop fighting you, Lord. I'm going to stop arguing with you, Lord. I'm going to stop misrepresenting you, Lord. I surrender my heart, my mind, my body. Take it all. And then wherever you want me to go, whatever you want me to do, I will do. Can I share something with you? I got the mic, so goes with the territory. <laughs> There's a quote. I, I just want you to read this. It's life transforming. Comes from the book Steps to Christ. Look at this and read with me. Many are inquiring how am I to make the what? Surrender of myself to God. You desire to give yourself to him, but you are what? You're weak. In slavery to doubt and controlled by the habits of your life of sin. Your promises and resolutions are like ropes of sand. You cannot control your thoughts, your impulses, 
your affections. How many of you can, don't raise your hand, but how many of you can testify Amen. that this is true? Amen. The knowledge of your and forfeited pledges weakens your confidence in your own sincerity and causes you to feel that God cannot accept you. But you need, somebody say thank you Jesus. You need not despair. What you need, this is the governing power in the nature of man. The power of decision or of choice. Jesus died to give you the power of choice. Everything depends on the right action of the will. The power of choice God has given to men. It is theirs to exercise. Look at this. You cannot change your heart. You cannot of yourself Give to God its affections. But you can choose. You can choose to serve him. You can give him your. He will then work. All God wants you to do is to choose to serve the one who created you in his image. And when we wandered away and almost ruined that image, the one who died to redeem us, the one who has prepared bright mansions for us, the one who loves us enough to make the supreme sacrifice for us. He wants you to choose. It ain't over. Not yet. It's going to end. Because a day will come when, according to Revelation 22, 11, he will say, let he that is unjust be unjust still. Let he that is right, but it ain't over yet. So today, in behalf of your Savior, God had called me to invite you to make the choice that will give you eternal life. There's a song that, what was his name? Isaac Newton? Isaac? Watts, whatever his name was, slave master, slave master, amazing grace. It's amazing that God turned that man's heart around. And if he could do it for the writer of amazing grace, he can do it for anybody. I want you to sing that song with me. And I want to invite you, if you want to make a choice today to spend eternity with Jesus, I want you to rise to your full stature as we sing that song. But now 
I'm found T'was blind But now Before you sing another stanza, there's one of those stanzas that says, "'Twas grace that taught my heart to fear." And then it was grace my fears relieved. Isn't that amazing? God wants to save us more than we could ever imagine. But we have to cooperate. We have to be willing. And I'm so glad to see you on your feet this afternoon. But I want to ask you another question. If you are willing to allow God to use you, whether you are a senior or a youth, as a part of his coalition, I want you to step into the aisle, come down to the front, and we're going to sing another stanza of that song. What is the next stanza? Tell me. Twas grace. That is that stanza. That taught my heart to fear and grace my fears relieved. Grace that taught my heart to fear and grace. My fears really how precious that grace appeared the hour I first believed. God's making up a coalition of young people, old people, males and females. He's calling for people to be a part of his remnant to proclaim his message, to practice his message, and to prepare others through his message. And if you want to be a part of that coalition, would you step out into the aisle Come down to the front. God is calling for men and women, young people, old people. It doesn't matter. If you are willing, God is able. Would you come forward? If I understand Jesus correctly, not John Thompson, but Jesus said, you are either with me or you are against me. There are no, there's no middle ground. You have either made a surrender like this. Or you have held out. And I'm appealing to you in his behalf. Come all the way on the Lord's side. Don't stand on the sidelines. Give him your all, your mind, your heart, your body, your talents. Whatever you have belongs to God. And the good news is that whatever you place in his hands, he will multiply. Someone else, 
who wants to side with Jesus, who wants to go all the way with him. I don't know how many more stanzas we have, but if we'll sing at least two more, and then we're going to have prayer. And as we are singing these, I hope, I trust, I pray that you will take your stand with Jesus rather than being against Jesus. Mm. Father and our God, we thank you for pouring the best gift you could offer out at Calvary. Thank you for loving us enough to sacrifice your only son, to make it possible for those who are clearly enemies and rebels against you to repent, to turn, to surrender, to give themselves wholly to you so that you can transform us and use us to be a blessing to others. Thank you for that grace. Thank you for that outpouring of love. We thank you, Lord, for those who stood today. We want to rejoice with you for those who stepped out and came forward. We pray that you will multiply our talents and gifts, our resources. You said you are the one who teaches us to profit. So we never lose anything by following you. But we gain the best of earth and all the treasures of heaven. We ask that you will seal our decisions today. That you will bless this church, its pastor, its pastoral staff, its workers, its officers. Let the light that shines from this building be a bright light leading men and women from this community to eternal life. And then when it's time for you to come back and claim your children, may each of us be among those who receive a crown of life for having surrendered and followed and humbled ourselves before you is our prayer in Jesus' name that the people of God say, Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord for that. Let's stand for the benediction, would you please?
Shall we pray? Our Father, in the solemnity of this moment, we bow to say thank you for such a splendid sermon from your servant, Elder Thompson. We pray now that these truths that he has given to us from you may sink well within our lives, help us to be productive citizens for the kingdom. Now bless us as we go our several ways. We pray this prayer and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. downstairs, I'd like to remind you that dinner will be served downstairs and just in case somebody might proceed and not and, and eat without the blessing, let's say the blessing right now, okay? Can we do that? All right. Let's pray that the Lord will bless the food. Now, Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for our fellowship together. We ask a special blessing upon the food that will be served downstairs. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Amen. Amen. 